What's up, guys? Welcome to Students of the Game, and we're back here today with another draft special with the guy, the man, the myth, the legend. What's up, everybody? Um, yeah, so today's draft, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the worst transfers of all time. The transfer window this year is going to look a hell of a lot different than it has done over the past however many years it's been. So we're going to kind of, I think, maybe a bit of a teaser. We're going to look at the best transfers in a future video. But for this video, we're looking at the worst football transfers of all time. Um, James and I kind of did a Zoom call, uh, rock, paper, scissors in our last video, which was a little disjointed and a little crazy. So what we're going to do, I have a trivia question for James. Okay, James there we go. If James gets it right, he gets the first pick. If he gets it wrong, I get the first pick. It's not ridiculously difficult, I hope. But it's, t it's kind of tricky enough, I guess, um, that might give me a shout to have a number one pick. So, okay. James, Go. at which club did Alan Shearer start his professional career? Southampton. Correct. So, you get the first pick. Ding, ding, ding. Nice. Very nice. Um, first pick. Ooh. Of, of my third. Is, is, is it to me the worst deal? Yep. So, your number one all-time worst transfer deal. Um, I'm going to pick this deal from the fact of the yes, the player went on to be very successful afterwards. It was second before and after, but I feel the overall deal and how it panned out, how like Messi, it got out of time. I felt it, was, it never really worked out. And when you look at it, it never was going to, going to work out. And that's last time Ibrahimovic's move to Barcelona. That was my number one too. Yeah. I mean... What can we say about that deal? Like they paid what ninety? Wait, uh, they paid fifty nine million plus Samuel Etu. If you remember, was coming off his best season for Barcelona as a swap deal. So if you kind of put it together, the value of Samuel Etu and the money that they paid it was, it was like it was literally like a hundred million pound deal at that time. Him joining Barcelona, he started off like a house on fire. If you remember, I'm pretty sure he scored his first like eight straight games. I yeah. remember one free kick. I'm not sure what team he scored. I'm not sure the free kick. I'm not sure the game, but I'm, I remember one amazing free kick he scored. He scored in the he scored the winner in the uh, classic old game at the um at the new camp and everything was rosy. Then, if you remember straight, um, Guardiola decided to um make a change and put Messi into the striker position, bring him, uh, uh bring back the false uh n number nine um tactic and then last time slowly but surely got away him and Guardiola's relationship got very sticky to the point where they wouldn't talk to each other yeah he would be on I mean, the like you're, you're you're absolutely right this was my number one pick too uh it makes a lot of sense I think you I think he scored like 22 20 goals 21 goals he scored 21 yeah. goals I think you know, I don't think you can ever say signing Latan Ibrahimovic is bad um he then goes on loan to Milan he then gets sold to Milan permanently for like 20, 25 mil, something around that stamp, standpoint as well. So you're losing like a net of about 40 mil. You also lose Samuel Eto'o, who then goes on to win the treble with Jose Mourinho and Inter Milan. I, I can understand why people might criticize this as a number one pick, but I think you and I agree here. You can't take a player like Zlatan, lose a player like Eto, and then lose a player like Zlatan whilst losing 40 million pounds. So uh -huh. good pick. I totally agree. You took my number one. So for me, my number two, this isn't, this isn't strictly going to maybe blow your socks off as like one of the worst, worst transfers. And so this is my number one worst transfer of all time. Danny Drinkwater to Chelsea from last year. <laughs> I mean, it was one of these, it was one of these deals where I thought, okay, like Chelsea could maybe use a little depth, 10, 15 mil, Danny Drinkwater, maybe, you know, just coming off winning the league with Leicester. I understand that. And then you kind of look back and you go, okay, uh, he cost like 35 million pounds, 40 million pounds. And you look at that and go, hmm, interesting. He made no impact on the team whatsoever. It took him a little while. He went on loan. And now he's playing at Aston Villa. He's barely making the subs bench. He's barely being selected for the squad at Aston Villa only a couple of years later. For me, Danny Drinkwater for 35, 40 million pounds from Leicester City and where he is now is crazy. You and I both know the reason why that Leicester midfield worked was not Danny Drinkwater, it was N'Golo Kante. And Danny Drinkwater, I think, kind of rode his coattails a little bit. So for me, Chelsea, terrible transfer.
I mean, I think the first, first of all, with this whole thing that we're doing, we're not saying these players are bad. We're talking about how the transfer worked out at the time. And Jack, you hit it now. You, you hit a spot on there. You know, this guy, for Leicester, let's be honest, he was brilliant. You know, the, like the title winning season. He wasn't better than Kante, but he had a brilliant season himself. He got selected for the England team and he looked to be like, you know, up there. But mm -hmm. by him going to Chelsea, and especially like you playing for a team like Leicester and then transitioning to a team like Chelsea at that, like, like at that standard. In football, I have this saying that there's levels to this, like, you know what? Right. And Chelsea are, at Chelsea are a cut above, um, to me, a big cut above Leicester. And, and him coming in, going against all these world-class top players around him, he was never really going to fit in. It seems to be Chelsea on the bottom to kind of... Um, uh, to kind of coexist with the what bringing in you have to have a certain amount of English players in your mm -hmm. team so that's why at that time he was like valuable let's be honest we, we could put about like 10 English players in there who never really worked out you know especially Liverpool they would like Liverpool have a, a few of them type ones to be fair yeah they do but so thoughts on that as a number one pick I mean I don't um, think it's it's uh Zlatan but I I feel like we've had some worse like some worse awesome. like okay. that, like Daddy Drink Water was it was it was odd, you know it was odd from the point of view of Chelsea paying that much money for not a world class player but just a good player you know mm -hmm. yeah and even Ch Chelsea had some worse ones like we can even mention like Bakayoko that was you know that like like that was like that wasn't great um well. I tell you that it's about. I'm not. I'm not going to say because. You, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's your who's your number two pick? Number two. Hoo, 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 hoo. This one, um, for me, again. I'm not saying this guy's a bad player, but for what happened during, like, like during that time where he is and how, and how the whole like transfer aftermath of the transfer. To, oh. to interrupt you very quickly, just for people listening, I think it's very quick that you and I give a quick disclaimer. Players, when they're moving clubs and being offered money, they're not usually pushing to move to clubs and earn certain amounts of money. The teams are buying these players. A player doesn't decide how much they're worth. That's between two clubs. So when you look a transfer fee like Danny Drinkwater 35 40 million Danny Drinkwater had nothing to do with the price he paid that's a Chelsea thing so in any of these transfers Zlatan Danny Drinkwater whoever James is about to say it's not a criticism of the player it's usually a criticism of the club for making the deal happen in the first place I just changed my as you were talking there I just changed my mind completely because I, okay. I thought about the magnitude of this deal and the impact it had at the time and I'm going to go for Alexis Sanchez and move to Manchester United. Now, you can say United did get him on a free. I swapped the Mkhitaryan goes one way and he comes the other way. But you must understand where Alexis Sanchez was at that time and where, we, and, and like, and like where he was um, after the, uh, the deal. At Arsenal, and a lot of Arsenal fans who, are who, like, like who, who would be watching this will tell you like the best player we've seen since Robin Van Persie. Right. Absolutely incredible. His, what, his goal tally has asked on first season 25, second season 17, third season, uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, third season 30 goals. Something yep. He was ridiculous in the argument of him being the best player in the Premier League over Eden Hazard. He was that good. He was, like, he was around the Ballon d'Or vote. And when Manchester United bought him out at that time, that was, that was the tipping point. Oh, now we oh with him signing with us, we can use this to catch City. Mm. I know my days it, it went, <laughs> it went, it went completely downhill. Yeah, like the classic when he first signed up. Um, it was of oh, of course like the videos were leaked, and then like the thing of um introducing him, the the classic piano thing. It's time, and then it goes downhill. But the thing that made it crazy is that the amount of wages that they paid him. So his contract to Manchester United. Is um is actually worth over 180 million. Yeah, you know, yeah. Manchester United paying nearly half a million a um a week for Sanchez. Um, yeah. he boy well, he has a record uh for uh most paid player in Premier League history by a good distance. Like the deal overall, like he might like it might be a free but how but but the big investment Manchester United paid for him, like it wasn't worth it. Like, yeah, no, he. You know? 
uh, he's always a player to me that that's been burnt out. Um, I think whether it's been international duty or for, for the clubs he's played for, he's always worked a lot harder than a lot of other players. And to me, it's just a guy who peaked a little too early in his career um, and is unfortunately on the decline at, at, at still a relatively young age. Mm-hmm. With, with him going on loan to Inter, and then he had a few good games. I think he scored in his debut. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Good games. and then you see that I... I don't think Inter want to keep him afterwards, so he will be going back to Manchester United, and that wage bill comes back, and you know they're going to have to try and shift him on eventually. I can't disagree with you here. It's so much money to be paying in wages, and you know I I still think, and it's the same with a lot of these of these guys that we're going to pick who are still in the game. They could still prove us wrong, but I'd say prob- I'd say probably not in this circumstance. So moving on to my second pick. My second pick, and I think this is where I might get a bit of criticism, because keep in mind, it's for right now. It's not for what he could be or whatever. Usman Dembele um, to Barcelona. Okay, I'm listening. I'm I'm listening. Hear me out. out. And the reason why I had that little rant earlier about how we cannot be criticising the player here, Usman Dembele did not ask Barcelona to pay £112.5 million for him. They... Usman Dembele did not ask for that. He went to Borussia Dortmund, had one really, really good year. And then Barcelona, who, can I just say, in terms of worst transfers, make a lot of bad, bad looking mm. transfers. I would argue that in terms of big clubs, Barcelona probably make the worst, the worst transfers out of all of them. Um, they sell Neymar to PSG for 200 million euros, something around that, something around that mark. Every single club with an attacking player that Barcelona want, now know, oh, well, they've got loads of money to spend on a replacement. Usman Dembele was being, I think, touted around and, and you, know, you know, his price tag was being put around it. I remember it being about 60 million. And then yeah. Neymar went to PSG. Borussia Dortmund knew how much money Barcelona had to, had to dish out. And then his, his uh, money went up to 112.5 million. You look at Dembele's stats for his one year at Dortmund, they don't touch the entire time he spent at Barcelona so far. Now, I don't know if Dembele is going to hit the heights again, but I'm telling you now, nobody is going to pay anywhere near that kind of money again for Usman Dembele. Um, this one, I got to disagree with you here because we have to wait to see what he amounts to. But it's with, right now. But it's right it, now. It, 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 it's it's right, right now. With the majority of these deals, some of them you could clearly see they've never really worked out. Ibrahim Bitch's one was a one season thing and then he was done in Barcelona. Yeah. Um the one I who who did I just mention? Um Sanchez. Like, like Sanchez. He's had two seasons in Manchester United, he scored five goals. Dembele has had since a Barcelona where he, where like he showed glimpses of his genius of where he could possibly be. His problem is the amount of injuries he's getting. He doesn't take care of, of his body. I, again, we um, I, I speak to Timmy a lot about him. Timmy actually uh, defends him a lot, a lot, to be fair. The problem with him is that his diet isn't good. His discipline um, outside of football isn't great. He doesn't seem committed yeah. at, at times. And if, if he, you can just get that right, this guy is so talented, I believe he can take you to a serious oh, level of being yeah. a top five player, you know? Don't get me wrong. This guy, could, this guy could be a real, real, the real deal, really top player. I'm looking at it more from a standpoint of you had a guy who you could have potentially gotten for around the 60 million euros, 70 million euros from Dortmund after he had this great year. You then did not have the business sense to buy him first for that cheaper amount and then sell Neymar for the big amount. You sold Neymar first, let Dortmund know how much money you had to spend on a replacement. They bumped the price up, and now you made uh, you made Barcelona. Now you've made you forced yourself to pay 112.5 million for a player who really hasn't cut it for that kind of a price tag. That's my thing. It's like I said at the beginning, nothing against the player. It's terrible, terrible business from Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, James, who is your third pick? Um, my third pick is, I'm going to take it all the way back to 2006, and I'm going to go for Andrei Shevchenko's move to Chelsea. Chelsea now, yeah. I went back and I've seen different, um, what's it called again, speculation 
about this whole deal. Some people say like when he did sign, he was kind of positive for, listen, two, three years before he signed for Chelsea, he was a Ballon d'Or winner. Um, yeah. Here's his stats. Um, um, here is his stats in his last three seasons at um, uh, at AC Milan, who at the time was the best league. You, you could argue was the best league in Europe. Mm-hmm. Twenty eight goals, twenty six goals, twenty um uh twenty eight goals. So again, he's always hitting that twenty five plus mark every consistent. Season, yep. You know, he comes in to Chelsea. Abramovich loves him. I think um I think they're like both like similar countrymen. Somehow, but uh, but but Abramovich has a huge man crush on him. That's his guy. He kind of tried to force Mourinho's hand to play him a lot. It, Mourinho kind of bulges because Drogba is his guy. But here's a but like but like here's a player that they just played thirty million for mm-hmm. three years ago with a Ballon d'Or winner. This guy in his three seasons at Chelsea, well two technically, fourteen goals, nine goals, and zero goals in his last season. He played seventy-seven games overall for Chelsea in that time. And when I mean never really reached the heights of like where he was, this guy was scoring winning um uh this uh this this guy was scoring winning goals in Champions League finals and then mm-hmm. couldn't even get he wasn't even third choice striker at a time for Chelsea, you know? Yeah, it's it's hard to disagree with you there. It was a bad transfer. I do think there are worse ones out there. Um and you know I'm I will get to my last pick here and then we'll we'll kind of have a quick quick go on some honorable mentions. But I think you could very easily start talking about strikers who didn't quite make it. You can talk about Falcao. You can talk about Torres. You can talk about Andy Carroll. You can do all these things. Now, I think Shevchenko falls within that bracket. And I don't mm-hmm. I would say he particularly stands out in that bracket. But was he a flop? And at the time, a very expensive flop, for sure. Yeah, I'm um, pretty sure he was a record in... Um, uh, like he was a world record... For- for the Premier League, he was the most expensive Premier League player for, I don't know, for like, until Rubinho signed for Man City, he was the most expensive That's Premier League nothing. player. So moving on to my last one. Now, this is a toss-up between uh, Carlos Tevez going to uh, Shanghai Chenua um, and Ali Dia uh, signing for oh, a free transfer day. for Southampton. And I think purely because I want to tell the story, I'm going to go for Ali Dia signing for Southampton. Go on, Jack, now, take it away. To those, to those that don't know, Ali Dia signed a contract with Southampton Football Club when everybody's favourite pundit, Graham Souness, uh, was a manager there. Um, Ali Dia uh, told Graham Souness that he was the uh, cousin of George Ware, who the who all time one of the all time greats. A Ballon d'Or winner, only African who players win a Ballon d'Or. Who had just come off winning the uh, the Ballon d'Or in 1995. Um, George Ware signed a, a one-month contract, so okay, the risk and reward there is not too bad. Um, he played 52 minutes against Leeds United, running around, doing nothing. He then got subbed off after, I think, being subbed on for Matt Letizier, and then he had his contract terminated. Now, I'm not saying that from a business point of view, you sign a player for free who probably doesn't make too much money to a one-month deal and then you terminate his contract. I'm not saying it's that bad, but you're, you're a manager of Southampton Football Club. You're Graham Souness, and some guy tells you that he's a cousin of George Ware and you give him a contract? You cannot tell me that that is a good transfer and a good signing. That is one of the worst of all time, purely because of the embarrassment that Sunes must have felt. If we're talking about like embarrassment of of, of like a transfer, that is number one. You know, yeah. like this this guy's not. Uh, I, I was before we came on here. I was I, I was listening uh, to Pundit speaking about it, and, and like they were saying that when he showed up for training, they could already tell that he wasn't going to be good in the first two minutes of him on the pitch. Like this guy, like 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 this guy was worse than most Sunday league players. Yeah, and for right. some reason, he ends up on a professional football field in the Barclays Premier League. I mean, that that, that I mean that takes the cake. You know, it's it, it's such a crazy deal. Whoever whoever that agent is, please come. Yeah, <laughs> come meet me. We can Talk sort me. something out. <laughs> but so, yeah, I, couple of couple of my honourable mentions, um, and I only I only really had one more. Is Tevez now? Tevez went to Shanghai Shenhua. On January 1st of 2017, um, in his time there, I think he spent a year there, um, 
He played 16 games. 16. 15. It was for like just under 10 mil. wasn't too bad. But he was on 600,000 euros a week. 600,000 euros a week. Um, reportedly, it was just seen as a holiday for him where he could make loads of money and then go back to Boca Juniors. That has got to be one of the worst transfers ever. I know it's the Chinese Super League. I know a lot of players are going there for money. But at least, at least think about the player being relatively committed and trying to actually win games and play games. Criticize it or not, players such as Oscar, Hulk, um, Witzel, when he went there, these are guys who played games, really tried, you know, did their bit. Of course, they were earning a lot of money, but they really contributed to developing the league to where it is now. Tevez went there for a laugh, was, I think, at one point, the highest paid player in the world, played 16 games in the league, and then left. Um, to be honest, that deal was just... I think that was just Carlos Tevez at his absolute best. You know, it, it, it was... Because I feel like after Tevez, like... While Tevez was in... Um, after, after he left Juve and went back to Boca, it, it was like he said, like, that was where he wanted to end his career. Yeah. If someone throws that type of money at him, he can't say no. And even... And even to, let's be honest. He let everyone know. He said it. Like, I, like, he really doesn't want to be here. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure the majority of the time he was fit. He just found a way just not to play. Yeah. And just took his money and left. What? I'm pretty sure that was a record... Um, I mean, that was record wages of all time. Like, I, I, th- I think so. Um, I, don't quite, I don't quite know the specifics. I, I think Messi and Ronaldo will certainly have some sort of wages which are, to- you know, told to everybody. But, you know, behind closed doors, under the table, I'm sure Messi and Ronaldo both get a little extra money. Um, <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not speak about. We might, we might get in trouble. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? That's, yeah. I'm, I'm speculating, of course, but I'm sure that players of that caliber will always be the highest paid. It's whether it's announced or not that it's legitimate or not. I would imagine Tevez was at least top three. Mm-hmm. I mean... Have you got any like, other honorable, have you got honorable mentions? Um, yeah, I actually have a few. Obviously, like one of the big ones, Andy Carroll to Liverpool. Sure. If you're a Liverpool fan, that never really worked out. This was a player who, at that time, was hot. Like, um, what he scored eleven goals in like sixteen games, some like like some some like that. He, he scored yeah. the winner against Arsenal. He was tipped oh Newcastle number nine, and like you know what, and also you know how Newcastle feel about their. Number nine, he was the big one. Liverpool just sold Fernando Torres for, we're going to get to that, for that crazy amount of money. And he comes in, actually on his like kind of sort of debut against Man City, he comes on, like he doesn't come on. He starts the game, scores two goals, and everyone's thinking, oh, this guy's going to hit the ground run. Andy Carroll, I like Liverpool. And then you can just see the way Kenny Dalglish wanted to play and then Brendan Rodgers, it just never was going to happen with him. His style of play never really messed with the team. Newcastle, he had Joey Barton lumping in them footballs onto his head and, and at Liverpool, they like to play a more ticky-tacky type of fashion and it just never really worked out for Andy Carroll there. Yeah, it was, it was a dumb, it was a dumb, it was a dumb play. You, you, you sign a player who's hot, who's English too, you know, you want to excite a fan base a little bit, make them feel a little patriotic. But yeah, Fernando Torres and Andy Carroll, that is not a like-for-like player. Uh, it does not fit within the system they wanted to play. That came, you know, blatantly clear very early on. And then I think after a little while, people started to realise, right, why the hell did we do this? This was a very strange transfer. And obviously, we know his injury history. We know he's never really been back consistently since his transfer to Liverpool and then out of Liverpool again. Definitely, definitely not a good one. Do you, uh, do you have any more, Jack? No, those, those were my ones. So, so I'll just summarise mine very quickly. So I had the number, the number two pick, um, who I chose as Danny Drinkwater and his uh, £40 million transfer from... Uh, from Leicester to Chelsea, and now he can't even make the bench for Aston Villa as a 30-year-old. Um, my second round pick, um, maybe I'm going to be criticised here a little bit, but was Usman Dembele. Yeah, again, nothing against Dembele. Um, I right, please comment he, down below. I really want to know what you, <laughs> you guys think yeah. about that deal. Please comment down below. Yeah, for let that. me have it. It's nothing against Usman Dembele. It's the way that Barcelona manipulated the market. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. 
um, you know, you sign, you sign the replacement and then you sell the guy that, you know, the other team really wants to buy. You don't sell somebody, then you don't have the leverage to get a better deal. Dortmund had all the leverage in that situation. They had him contracted, I think, for another three years or so. Barcelona massively overpaid. And since being at Dortmund, he's not recreated that kind of form. More of a Barcelona thing, not a Dembele thing. I'm not trying to hate on him. And then my third round pick, purely for the meme, really, Ali Dia, free yeah. transfer, Southampton. Those are my three picks, James. Um, yeah, so my three picks was, number one was Latan Ibrahimovic to Barcelona. Again, we spoke about that deal. Alexis Sanchez's deal to uh, Manchester United and Andrei Shevchenko's deal to Chelsea. Now, again, you guys might look at this list and be like, guys, you missed out on loads. And to be fair, I'm not going to lie, me just going through a list, we, they have been a lot been missed there. Angel Di Maria to Manchester United. That was okay. a uh, Mutu, uh, Diego, Mutu. Juve, there's all sorts. No. Fernando Torres. People might say, my thing about Fernando, I don't think Fernando Torres is overall that bad. All, mate, the only thing I have in my head from Torres' time at Chelsea, and, you, you know, I know he scored 20 goals in 110 appearances or whatever, but the only picture I have of Torres in my head in a Chelsea shirt is going round Victor Valdez and scoring. And like, I tell you what, it's a lot of money, but that was a very important goal. A champ- listen, that Champions League victory was worth God knows how much. And, and like that moment alone is edge in Chelsea's history. Like, he's like, when you look at it, Chelsea fans, yeah, you might not, you, you, they might not have seen Fernando Torres there. But he's ultimately like a cult hero for what, for yeah. what he, he did that day, you know? Uh, what else can I, could I really think of here? We have, uh, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of Premier League ones. Like, Premier League teams have had some really, really, really bad ones. You mentioned Jonathan Woodgate to Real Madrid. That was a, uh, that was a, like, that was yeah, a bad one. Yeah. There, there are loads. I mean, Veron to Manchester United. I think yeah. the thing is, all, all the big teams um, will always be known as making bad transfers because... You know, unfortunately, that's where most of the money's going to go. Uh, Bebe comes to mind, like Ferguson oh, had seen yeah. him pay or something like that. Um, I'm who trying to, th- I'm trying to think of others, but who was the Barcelona defender that they found for 25 million? Oh, uh, Kr- 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 Kriginski. Yeah, yeah, Kriginski. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like they paid that. They paid a lot of money for him, and you can just tell from like the first trainer says a couple of but first trainer he wasn't really at it like that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was. They're, they're, I'll tell you one thing, one thing that I think this shows me as well. Um, I didn't mention a single Real Madrid player in any of these. I didn't mention a single Juventus player in any of these. Mm, um, I'm Arsenal not going to lie. Real, uh, Real Madrid, they've had some bad ones. Who was the guy that played for West Ham? Oh, no, 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 no. There was one guy that played for West Ham and found himself uh, joining Real, like, Real Madrid. Oh, my days. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll literally have to research that up. Oh, my days. Also, in the comments, like, answer these questions for us. Please, guys. <laughs> I'm, like, I'll, I'll probably find them one day, but please let me know. Like, Real Madrid has had some, you know, pretty bad ones in a day. Yeah, Mendy, you know, that never really that worked out, you know. Yeah, no, been Diego a few. to Juve. I was talking to Joaquin about that before we started here. Diego to Juve was was a really really strange one. Was um, that the Brazilian one? Yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, I think that um, you know to to conclude here, please please let us know um, who you thought won this draft. So for me, uh, I had uh, Drinkwater uh, to Chelsea, Dembele to uh, Barcelona, and Ali Dia to Southampton. Um, obviously, I'd like you to uh, vote for me, but if you thought if you thought James's was better, that's okay. That's up to you. Um, we will be doing in future a video of our best transfers, which I think is going to be. Um, probably a little bit more of a passionate video because it's you mm-hmm. know these, these players we kind of laugh at and these deals we kind of kind of make fun of. Um, the next one's going to be a bit more serious about players who've really made an impact um, and, and, and and the best signings. Um, but yeah, James. What else can I say, guys? Um, thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions of videos you want to see, or if you disagree with anything me and Jack had to say, please comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And Jack. Should we finish off with the with the with the last stop? I'm gonna dip into a bit of sauce right now, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.